The legions of dedicated yoga practitioners can attest to the feel-good power of a deep stretch, but believe it or not, the medical community is divided on the actual benefits of stretching. Here to help us make sense of the science of stretching is WSJ contributor Heidi Mitchell and University of Virginia sports medicine professor Jay Hertel. Thanks to both of you for being with us. Heidi, I have to tell you, I spent years as a dancer stretching every day. I still It's the one thing I can still do, and now you're going to tell me that there's no benefit to it? Well, you know, it definitely feels good and that sends a signal to your brain right. that, you know, you're doing something that, you know, was getting you moving. It gets the blood flowing. But this, the science has been inconclusive and people still argue about whether or not there are any actual benefits to the stretching itself. So <laughs> it feels good. That's the best you can tell me. All right, Dr. Hertel, please tell us what exactly happens when we stretch. Why is it often painful? And do you recommend people push through the pain? Sure. So the you definitely don't want to push through the, the pain. What you're doing when you stretch is to uh, elongate the, the muscle. And as you're doing that, the, the muscle tissue itself is lengthening, but so is the connective tissue like fascia that's around the muscle um, as well. And those um, tissues both have nervous receptors in them. And if you stretch them too far, you're going to perceive pain. All right. So don't push. Don't push past the pain, that's good to know. But Heidi, we often hear that stretching can help reduce or even eliminate injury. Is there any evidence of that? Well, the interesting thing is that most of the studies that have been done, they work with a sports teams, so they have a larger set of people to work with. And it's hard to decouple stretching from warming up. So warming up does have benefits, you get the blood flowing to the muscles. Dr. Hertel can attest to that as well, sure. but it's hard to say whether it's the stretching or whether it's the warming up. And but and Dr. Hertel, can you actually be too flexible? Is that possible? So flexible that you lose strength? Yes, so, so you, you definitely can be too flexible and especially on the, the injury risk side, if you have too much motion available, um, that can, can definitely set you up for, for joint injuries as well. And also on, on the you know, being not flexible enough side, so there's really this envelope of acceptable flexibility in the middle of not being too flexible and not, uh, not having too little flexibility as well. So you kind of want to hit that happy medium, correct? Now, Heidi, you write, though, that popping into the splits is something that no one should do. We should all take it easy, right? <laughs> When's the last time you were able to pop into the splits? <laughs> I'm not really that concerned about that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, if you've ever gone a little bit too far in yoga where you're going into warrior pose and you go too far, you can feel that pain and you can pull a muscle. You can injure yourself. So you don't want to push through that pain. So to easing into it is the way to go. And Dr. Hertel, what role should stretching play in warming up? Is it essential that we add that to our warm-up routine? Sure. I, I think that the key really is to do active stretching. So it's not so much, you know, holding stretches for 20 or, or 30 seconds, but as part of the, the warm-up process going through, you know, functional ranges of motion, taking your, your joints towards the ends of, of their ranges of motion during movement patterns that, that are going to be similar to what you're going to be doing once you actually start to fully participate in exercise or sport. All right. Well, I like stretching too much to stop, so I'm going to keep with it no matter what. Heidi and Dr. Hertel, thanks to both of you for being with us. And after the break, the rise of the aging exerciser. Stay with us.